the first session and uh, Dr. Bharat was so kind enough to take over the uh, pleasant job of uh, welcoming all the delegates. I welcome you. Uh, actually, there was, uh, 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 I, uh, Dr. Devashri was supposed to be scrubbing with me. I did not calculate the time and I told De Dr. Devashri to go to ITC, have lunch and then come back and unfortunately the time was not enough. I did not predict it. <laughs> so I have requested one of my previous colleague, Dr. Arvind, who is currently in Nagpur, uh, to be the, 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 the main operator. Now, uh, can I uh, request one of my colleagues to give the PowerPoint presentation? Good afternoon. Uh, the present patient is Master K, 12-year-old boy, presented with history of NYC class 2 existential dyspnea, diagnosed of tetralogy file of 6 months of age, right modified petition was done by right thoracotomy at 1 and a half years of age in 2008. Angiogram in 2009 for worsening cyanosis and suspected shunt block showed blocked RMB shunt and hilar RPA was cut off from the mid-restrial RPA. So underwent redo central shunt at two and a half years of age. During the surgery, eight millimeter goretic tube interposition graft was used to reconstruct the RPA. SVC was divided and re during the surgery. In 2011, a repeat cardiac cath was done, which showed a blocked central shunt, hilar RPA narrowing, and multiple map cuts, which were occluded by coils. Then he was planned for ICR. Intra finding showed that RPA graft was found to be significantly narrowed. So ICR was abandoned and pericardial plasty of the Gore-Tex tube was done along with the right gland shunt. Presented to Triple M in 2016 with worsening existential dyspnea and cyanosis. Cardiac catheterization showed a PA pressure of 20 by 13 mean of 15 with a uh, ventricular pressure of 125. So there was a 105 millimeters mercury gradient across the RV outflow. And uh, PAs were, uh, RPA was 7.5 and LPA was 7.5. That time, this is the angiogram showing, uh, this is the LPA angiogram sh uh, showing adequate operation and uh, Levofa showing the pulmonary veins. This is the SVC injection which is showing the uh, filling of the RPA and the uh, Levofa showing the pulmonary veins. The patient also had a retroaortic innominate vein with a small venous collaterals. So patient underwent intracardiac repair, Gore-Tex patch closure of a ventricular septal defect, infant muscle resection and transcendental pericardial patch and reconstruction of RVOT with monocast. The glenchen was taken down and the SVC was reconstructed using a 16 minute pericardial tube and LP origin plasty was done. On examination, weight is 29.8 kg, saturated 96% in room air. On serious examination, midnight sternotomy and right thoracotomy scan is present. Dilated veins are seen over the chest wall. JVP is elevated, apex in fifth intercostalus in midlife gland, ST is widely split, and a 3 by 6 ejection systolic moment in the left upper sternal border. Six extra showing cytos solitus, levocardia, CTR of 50%, good, vascular, uh, good pulmonary, vascular, uh, pulmonary vascularity. ECG showing sinus rhythm with right axis deviation and right ventricular hypertrophy. Echocardiography, subcostal short axis showing IVC congestion. The four chamber was showing mildly dilated RARV with adequate biventricular function. Mild TR with a RVSP of 92 millis mercury plus RA. The VST patch was intact with no significant aortic regurgitation. There is no significant proximal IVOT gradient with mild PR. The Hylar RPA was significantly narrowed with a gradient of 66 millis mercury. The LP origin was significantly narrowed. The LP origin was measured around 7 mm on echo and distally around 12 mm. The SVC was, uh, there's flow turbulence across the SVC with a peak gradient of 11 and mean gradient of 7 millimeters mercury. So did a cardiac cath. In the cardiac cath, there was a gradient of 12 millimeters mercury from the SVC to the RA, a gradient of 70 millimeters mercury from the MPA to the RPA, and uh, 60 millimeters mercury across the LPA. The RV pressure was 100, uh, as against the LV pressure of 120 millimeters mercury. So this is the AP view showing the SVC injection. The dilated azygos vein is overlapping on this SVC injection. On the lateral view, we can see that the azygos vein is dilated and is getting decompressed. In spite of the large azygos vein decompressing, there's significant gradient of 12 meters mercury across the SVC. The SVC above the narrowing was 7 millimeters. The SVC below the narrowing was 12 millimeters. The length of the narrowest part was 14 mm. This is the LP angiogram uh, showing the LP origin was measuring around 5 mm. Hylar LP was around 8 mm. The RP injection was showing hilar RP and arrowing. Proximal RP was 12 mm and hilar RP was 4 mm. This is a rotational angiogram of the same, showing the 
RBOT anatomy and the P anatomy. This is a three reconstructed image of the rotational angiogram with the color, uh, color volume rendering and the plane volume rendering. So uh, demonstrating the P anatomy. CT pulmonary angiogram is done, which is showing the uh, hilar RPA narrowing. The proximal RPA was 12 mm, hilar RPA was 4 mm. The LPA was uh, as a tortuous course and had uh, LP origin was 4.5 mm, hilar LPA was 8 mm. This is the measurement done on the CT image of the RPA. The medicinal RPA was 12 mm and hilar was 4 mm. And the uh, length of the approximately around 28 mm was measured, maybe the required part of the stenting, which will require. This is a diagram showing the same. This is a 3D reconstruction of the uh, CT image showing the uh, hilar uh, RP narrowing and the tortuous LPA course along with the LPA origin narrowing. So final diagnosis, tetralogy follow, status post tight bit modified BT shunt, post central shunt, post ICR for technical gland shunt with severe hilar RP stenosis and severe LPA origin stenosis with significant long segment SVC stenosis. Plan is stenting of RP, LP and SVC RT junction. Thank you. So uh, uh, I, I think uh, you all heard the story. This is a boy, young boy who has had four uh, cuts in the chest so far. Two shunts, one glen shunt and one intracardiac repair and is having a right and left pulmonary artery narrowing with an RV systolic pressure of around 100 during the previous cath. Today's hemodynamics are right atrial mean was 7, right ventricle was 110, right pulmonary artery was less than 30 and left pulmonary artery was less than uh, like around 35. I'll show the angiogram now, show angiogram. So we got a right pulmonary artery profiled in RAO about 17 and cranial about 25 with a marker pigtail. The adjacent picture shows the hilar RPA is around 5.5 millimeter and the entire length of the RPA was around 28 millimeter. The next left pulmonary artery angiogram. So we took a left pulmonary artery angiogram in LAO 47 and cranial 36 and we got a picture of an osteal narrowing and then near the hilum another narrowing. Can you show the still frame of this? Freeze it. Freeze. Ah, go back. So you can find that there is a double layer, double level of narrowing, one at the ostium and one at the hilum. Now uh, if you see, suddenly we have chosen one LAO angiogram in a cranial projection and one RAO angiogram in a cranial projection. And how it was helped out was yeah, what is called as a CT fusion. So now this is what a group of people here, one of my colleague, Dr. Bhushan, who is from Mumbai, and Maruti, who is uh, the Philips uh, technical expert, have done. The CT scan, they have fused it on to the fluoroscopy. And then they angulated and showed that this is the angle at which you are going to get the full delineation. So it makes it very easy for us to get, it, get into that. And then for the left pulmonary artery, he showed that, run that picture. He showed that this is the angiogram that is going to show the best profile. And then it was easy for us to make the angiogram. Run the angiogram and fuse it. Yeah, run it. That is the angiogram and we could fuse it. So you can see that basically they are using fiducial markers of the sternal wires. They are trying to overlap the sternal wires over the CT scan and the sternal wires and fluoroscopy and trying to get this picture. So now can you show the fixed image of the LPA stenosis? The photographic image of the LPA stenosis? the photographic still photo of the LPA stenosis. Yeah, so the, the no, the, the, this was this was an oblique uh, view of the LPA origin. Next picture, that's le length of 27. Next picture, next, next. 
Actually, if you go back to that lift, show me the lift. Show the lift. Yeah, you can see that the lift pulmonary artery has to be measured vertically, but has been recorded very obliquely. Actually, the left pulmonary artery ostium was somewhere around 4.5 millimeter in the same picture that I'm showing. And the entire length of the lesion was around 27 to 28. So uh, now what will be the plan on, on, on this patient? Like obviously we have to stent it because the right pulmonary artery has been repaired previously with a Gore-Tex tube graft. And then the Gore-Tex tube graft has been cut and they have they have longitudinally cut and they have patched with a bovine pericardium. So part of the circumference is Gore-Tex patch, part of the circumference is bovine pericardium on the right side. And on the left side, it is all native pericardium because during the transhandler patch, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the pericardial patch has extended into the LPR origin, which is causing an LPR origin stenosis. So now what will be the plan? What is the size of the distal LPA? Nine distal to the the uh, hilar LPA was. Can you can you show me the what LPA the frozen there? frame? Approximately between nine to ten millimeters. Photo, nine point five photo. or something. Show the LPA photo. Go to the photo. That is right. Ah, go to the left. Correct. You see that the 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 the, the bulged portion of the LPA is around nine point six. And then there is a narrow portion prior to the hilum, which we measured as 8. That, for, that image was not, for, was not saved. So that was 8. And then the post hilar vessel is almost around 10 to 11. Really speaking, I think as far as LPI is concerned, that distal narrowing is, I'm not so sure what is its hemodynamic relevance. But anyway, you're going to take care of that. So my, choi my the choice picture. would be yeah. uh, a 10 millimeter stent. Uh, but uh, as far as the length is concerned, I think what are the lengths available to you? Because to the best of my knowledge, you have either 30 or 40. You have anything in between? Okay. So you are talking about a, 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 a pre-mounted cook formula stent. Is one of the choices, I would definitely think. And I would like to make okay. one comment, okay. Shiva. Yes. You know, yes. Uh, what I have learned... Uh, looking at other people's cases also, and recently we had one case, is that when you do a LPA stenting, it's always a good idea to know the relationship of the left pulmonary artery to the left bronchus. I have seen many disasters yeah. uh, uh, in people trying to stent the left pulmonary artery, compressing the left bronchus and causing collapse of the left lung. So I think it's always a good idea to look yes. at it CT-wise, to look at it, look at it fluoroscopically and what have you. Yeah, I think, I think that's a very, very, very important point, Dr. Bharat. I, I think there are people who have uh, stented the left pulmonary artery and ended up with a chronic cough and chronic uh, repeated left lower lobe collapse, left lower lobe bronchiectasis and all in, in some of the patients. In this particular patient, uh, the left pulmonary artery was, there was some amount of fair separation. It didn't look very concerning. This patient was evaluated with a CT. In fact, this is the CT fusion. There was a, there was a fair amount of separation. This LPA stenosis happened after the last surgery where the surgeon extended the pericardial patch into the LPA origin. You can see the two clips at the lower end of the LPA pericardial patch. So in that area, so, so this LPA origin stenosis and, and the mid-level stenosis is all, all recent. RPA was uh, uh, the previous picture, previous picture. Uh, this RPA was, uh, from the beginning it was narrow. It was, it's partially Gore-Tex. The undersurface is Gore-Tex and the superior surface is bovine pericardium. Now, uh, the second concern is, would you think about a compliance testing? Because this is a, this is, this right pulmonary artery was not a, not a native vessel at all. It is partly Gore-Tex and partly bovine pericardium. So, would you like to first test the compliance before taking the stent? Because if the stent is not expanding at all, that would be a good idea, I think. I would, I would also think that it may not be a bad idea to uh, because, see uh, what is the... Uh, I think that it looks quite compliant and pulsatile, but it may not be a bad idea. And my other concern about the right pulmonary artery stenosis is that it is very close to bifurcation. 
So I'm not sure as to yeah. uh, what part of the stent uh, will remain hanging or you're going to commit yourself to one of the branches which is going lower down with an open cell and in case you okay. uh, entrap the upper lobe branch, then go through the cell and try and dilate it. I don't know what is your strategy for the okay. right now, pulmonary now, artery. Yeah, yeah. In, this, in, this, in this particular angiogram, we can see that the metal clip that is seen on the right pulmonary artery area is indicating us the, where is the bifurcation. So if our stent is going to be just abutting that right metal clip, can you see that right metal clip, one oblique metal clip? So if, uh, if you are abutting that metal clip, I think we should be not encroaching into the branch of the right. So there are certain landmarks. The length of the lesion was 20, 27 to 28 millimeter on the right and same around 27 to 28 on the left. But the, the exact concern uh, for us was uh, to but me, the, what is that? But the exact stenosis is at the uh, level of that particular pin only. So you would want to cover it, overlap it up a little bit, no? The stenosis is Actually, just... In a, if, if you see the CT, if the, if the CT scan also showed, overlap this with the CT, overlap this image with the CT. The, the CT scan also showed that there was a hilar level so LPS stenosis, stenosis as well. It was stenosis. not just the ostium. Uh, show the LPS uh, overlap. Yeah, run it. So you can you can appreciate that there are there is a two level stenosis. You just match it now. You uh, you can appreciate there is an initial osteal stenosis and then a bulged portion and then a second level stenosis and then it's branching out. So the the total length was uh, 26 to 27 on the left and uh, somewhere around 27 to 28 on the right. So what we thought was. Yeah, formula, the, like question number one was the compliance of the lesion and question number two is uh, the type of the stent. Is it a pre-mounted formula which will have a little bit low radial strength compared to a yeah, regular stent like an Andra or a CP? So the next step that we did was, next, uh, next step. So what we did was we put in a Mustang balloon. We inflated it to 16 atmospheres and we found that at 16 atmospheres it is fully able to open up. It was not opening till about 12 to 14, and then at 16 it opened. Now, if I had taken a Cook formula, the Cook formula's burst pressure is 10. So, so probably we would not have been able to eliminate this waste if it, if it had been a Cook formula primary stenting. This Mustang balloon, till around 12, it continued to re re retain a waste, and then once we crossed 14 and 16, then it opened up fully. Next picture. So then we dilated the entire right. Next. Next, then through this we put in a yeah, nine French sheath inside. So this is a nine French flexor long sheath. Next thing, the same doubt was there on the left. So this is a left Mustang, the same 10 millimeter. We balloon dilated. Here we got a waist at around waist relief at around 10 atmospheres. Now you can see that this is the balloon coming up. Now keep watching. This waist was there up to 10, and then at 10 it, it opened out. Then uh, next picture, then we, 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 we created a path, and right now we have next picture. Next picture. Yeah, welcome. Dr. Devashri has come, relief for me. Now uh, there are, uh, these are the two sheets across. So now, what is the, like being a 26 to 28 millimeter, we thought we will take a regular peripheral, I mean large vessel stent uh, uh, st of 28 millimeters. Uh, the, the stents that we are going to show is actually made in India. It's an equivalent of Andra stent. It is also a cobalt chromium. It comes like this. Come closer. Zoom. So this is made by the Sagajan and uh, make it larger. So made by the Sahajana. There is going to be a lecture on this particular stent in another one or two days. So it comes with, uh, with a test tube like one cover and then this is the stent. Now this stent has got certain peculiarities. It's a cobalt chromium stent. It's, uh, a, you, you, can, you can put a patient on MRI with this. It has got a C and S link. You have to close down. You zoom. Completely zoom in. Zoom in, deeper zoom. Okay, we will show you. We will show you in one of the lectures. Dr. Avinash from Jipmer Pondicherry is going to give a lecture on this particular stent in another couple of days in the What is New session. 
So this particular stent does not allow any foreshortening at all. And uh, this is a stent with uh, a radial strength which is comparable to Andra XL stent. So the, the radial strength is quite, quite good. So our plan is to take it on a 12 millimeter balloon. So this is a 12 millimeter Admiral Extreme. So I'm going to be mounting this stent onto the Admiral Extreme just to connect it to syringe. So I'm, I'm gently crimping. The advantages of this particular stent is that what you need is the balloon plus just one French above. So the profile is very, very, very thin. In technical terms, it is 200 micron thick. So, so it is, it is uh, what, whatever be the, the balloon size, this is a 12 French, uh, 12, 12 uh, Admiral Extreme. And if, if I take one French extra, that is enough. See that I'm, I'm using my finger to crimp it. And now I'm moving, it's fixed, fixed nicely. There are some people who will put a drop of contrast to make it sticky. But in this particular case, I have not done anything. I just took the, so this is decently mounted. So now we are going to put the stent on to the right pulmonary artery first. Siva Chetan here. Siva yeah, Chetan, how are you? I'm good, how are you Siva? I am fine. How, you, how was your flight from uh, uh, Birmingham down? Don't worry about it. We'll talk about it later. I thought you will come for the morning <laughs> wet lab. The flight got delayed. Anyway, uh, just oh, wanted sorry, to know, I can, I can see you already made your plan that you're going to stand this, but what was the result of your balloon? Yeah. Uh, did the pressure come down? Did uh, the oh. ang angiographic change? Because you managed to get rid of the waste, which was I a significant waste. I, I did not check uh, Dr. Chetan, but I feel that in pulmonary artery stenosis, uh, there is, uh, I, 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 I sincerely believe that there won't be any sensible response to balloon dilatation on a permanent basis. Uh, it is uh, partly Gore-Tex and partly bovine pericardium and with my balloon, if this vessel is going to be staying permanently open for the rest of its life, I'll be very surprised. Okay. I don't believe in pulmonary artery balloon dilatation alone in the mediastinal pulmonary arteries. But what will be your view, Chetan? No, I want a small uh, 8 French loader bus. I, I think uh, it all based upon what your plans are going to be. If you think that stents are good enough for this child throughout his whole life, that's fine. But I think if the RV pressure was half systemic, I would stop at it and probably let the child grow a bit bigger and you can stent it in the future. This is a 12-year-old boy who is already weighing about 35 kilograms. What more growth? I think this is... Won't you be happy? <laughs> Slightly inflate. No, Shiva, I take uh, Chetan's point. I think you may get... You may commit yourself to stand. I have no objection. But I think that there is no justification in not looking at the hemodynamics and angiographic picture after you have ballooned it. I think if you get a great result, yeah. uh, the, I agree. Maybe nine out of ten times you will not get a good result. But if hemodynamics look good, if RV pressures have dropped, I think there is a scope to wait a little while till such time he goes to 18 or 20 when he's fully grown. My next question was how far you can dilate this stent? This stent goes up to a maximum diameter of 18 millimeter in future. Okay. One eight. Okay. Thank you. It is like Andra, it is like Andra XL uh, and Andra XL actually goes up to 25, but this goes up to 18, 1, 8. Now the difference that I made from the begin, from the first time to now, previously I was not covering the stent with a sleeve and I had a co concern whether I will, uh, like the, the stent will manipulate the check flow of my flexor sheath. So now what I have done is I have taken the, uh, the balloon, uh, the, the stent over a sleeve. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I didn't, uh, uh, since uh, I had the sheath at the back of my balloon, I just advanced the sheath rather than checking uh, the pressure. Now give me the overlay now. So right now that, that marker is my landmark. 
uh, go to that same view, that uh, RAO cranial, the same view. You see, now this is how it comes. So when, when the, fluoro, the table is rotating, automatically the entire uh, 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 right pulmonary artery rotates and it comes to the view that we want. Connect it to indifflator system. So the, 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 that marker was my uh, uh, like guiding point. The, the clip on to the right upper lobe uh, pulmonary artery uh, was the, you are ready? So now I am going to peel back, sister don't inflate, I will tell you. I am just peeling back my sheath. So now I am going to make a side arm injection. Can you give me some contrast? I can show you the proximal RPA pressure now. Open the pressure line. This is the RPA pressure just before the stent, which is 120 now. So not much of difference has happened, Chetan. Maybe there is a stent also, but the stent is small. It is not so space occupying. Chiba, Dr. Suresh here. You agree? Chiba. Yes, Dr. Suresh. Yeah, pressure noted. That's yes. Why it didn't make any change. Just one question. Are you going to stand that RPA alone now? Or are you going to stand in sequence or are you going both, to do a both, both. both together? Are you going to do both together? No, or I'm not going to be doing. No, I'm going to be doing sequentially. You'll do the RPA first. Sequentially. sequentially. Yeah, RPA first because RPA was the Gore-Tex tube. So I want to see the, the worst uh, anatomical lesion, the first. So I that I will have the maximum uh, reduction in the RV pressures with the first balloon. And then within a short time, I will, I will do the next. Because already I have a sheath on the left. Okay. Your concern was, is it simultaneously we have to do, otherwise there will be a hyperperfusion pulmonary injury on one of the sites? One of them, yes. Okay. Yeah, it, it's probably not as critical and as uh, flow limiting as uh, we might think. Okay, now let me again it's check. It's quite all right. I just raised the point because that would be one of the ways to approach it, no? Yeah. So I thought it is worth raising that point. Like yeah. Clips to both under. Simultaneous, right? Yeah. So now, sister, I'm going to, I, I'm, I'm actually trusting completely on that right upper low pulmonary artery one clip alone. So what I'm doing is I am pulling back the sheath. I am pulling back the stent marginally. One of the things that we have done is we have taken right pulmonary, right femoral venous axis and left femoral venous axis. And right is for the right pulmonary artery and left is for the left pulmonary artery so that there is no confusion about which vessel we are dilating because when there are two groin sheets, that doubt will come. Sister, can you go slowly up? Uh. Yeah. Keep on inflating. Yeah. 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 What is the burst? 11. Go to 11. 11 French. Tell me if you have reached 11 and stay at 11. Could we zoom only on fluoroscopy, RBSP please? is going up. What is that? Could we zoom only on the fluoroscopy, not the overlapped images? Because many of us don't okay. get these overlapped. Okay. Yeah. Take away the overlap. Uh, take away the overlap and show the fluoroscopy here. Go, go and stay at 11. Take away the, take away the overlap. That's it. Okay. Now... Is it 11? Yes, sir. Go to 11 and stay at 11. 11 is the burst pressure of this Admiral Extreme Balloon. So I'm going to 11. Okay. You can see that the distal end is slightly narrow, which is the more critical part. Deflate now fully, sister. And as it is getting deflated, I'm slightly pushing the sheet. Is it, you are deflated? Yes. 
It's taking such a long time to deflate. I'm allowing my sheath to walk in through the balloon. And Dr. Devashri is going to hold the sheath for me here. And I am going to take out the balloon out. Okay. We will see what is the distal RPA pressure later. While I am going to be mounting the second stent on the left, Dr. Devashri and Dr. Aravind will record the uh, RPA pressures distal now. The second stent mounting is going to be exactly similar to the first stent. Open out another 28 Zephyr. This stent is called Zephyr. It's called uh, ZEPHYR. Get the get the get the balloon. Okay, the distal that the distal RPA pressure is about 40? 40? 49.50. It's actually marginal hyperperfusion on the right side now, and so it is looking higher. So it will come down after we stent to the left when the blood goes into the left also. So now I am crimping the left stent onto the same Admiral Extreme balloon. Can you focus there with the light? In that lab, is the next patient getting ready? Yeah. Okay, Dr. Biswajit, everybody is there. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Hemodynamics are remaining stable. So since time is running out, I'm just going to do the same steps again. You are ready with the indeflator? Length stent or it's a different length? 28 on 30. What is the length of the stent, Dr. Shiva? The, is it Dr. Sushil? Yes, sir. Dr. Sushil? Yes, yeah. sir. Sushil, it is also the same 28. Okay. It, it's the same 28. This stent comes as 18, 28, 38, 48, 58, like that. Okay. So, so it is. Uh, if if after 18, then the next is 28. Just a deflate. That is the length of the stent, isn't it? That's the length of the stent. The diameter is up to 18, depending on the balloon that you mount. You can mount, you can you can go up to 18. Yeah. It's a non-foreshortening stent, so it'll remain eight, 18. Uh, like uh, it'll remain the same 28 at all the diameters. Uh, this is a uh, Fix the fix the wire. Keep it straight and fix the wire. Keep the keep the balloon straight and fix. Balloon straight and fix. Yeah. Go to the LPA view, Maruti. Actually, Maruti and Bhushan had been doing phenomenal work on this CT fusion. Uh, from according to what uh, uh, Maruti says, this is the first time. Yeah. Right-sided heart structures is being fused. The heart navigator is actually. Uh, is actually a program made for the aortic valve, tower. But uh, they have tweaked it with what is called as a heart navigator 2 version of the Philips. And now they have got the, uh, the, uh, the first demonstration today. Uh, now, uh, can, we, can we overlay the fluoro? OK, overlay the fluoro. Fine. Now show me the left, what are the metallic markers? Show the LP angiogram, original LP angiogram. Original. Yeah, make it bigger. This one bigger. Yeah. So the two the two clips on the undersurface of the left pulmonary artery will be the showing what is the beginning. And the coil that is present in one of the mapka will show what is the end. So we let us try to use these two these two markers. So now I am peeling back the sheath. Now I am bringing back to that particular position. It is the two markers that we wanted and the coil. So I have got into that position. Now I am exposing a little bit. Actually, about a couple of months ago, Dr. Devashri conducted one excellent meeting called Stentacon in, in her uh, uh, place. It was Dr. Amitabha. And that was one of the, one of the meeting where uh, too much of stent discussions were there. Now I'm checking. 
Okay. So the two markers uh, it looks fine for me. Would you like to come back a bit? Pull it back, then yeah. I will get a little bit more into the main pulmonary artery. What do you say, Dr. Chetan, Dr. Bharat? Dr. Devashri wants a marginally to be pulled out, so I will I'll pull out a millimeter. Okay. But I, I think the metal clip is a clear indicator that I am covering the stain. I am covering the LPA origin. I'll make another angiogram. Dr. Chetan, what do you say? Looks good. You can go ahead. I will connect it to the proximal R RV pressures now, the main pulmonary artery, because my sheath is remaining in the main pulmonary artery. So we will get a hemodynamics before this stenting. So this pressure is the proximal main pulmonary artery pressure, which is now about 85, maybe yeah, or just less than 90. So let us stent it and then see how things are. Position is fine for me. Sister, slowly inflate. Yeah. 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 We are catching the waste. Go to 11 and stay at 11. Eleven. Stay at 11. Maybe go to 12. Deflate. Let's see how much the RV proximal MPA pressure falls when we die when we deflate. It's very slowly deflating. Devishri, can you hold the sheet? Yeah. Hold it. So now we have taken out the balloon. Uh, let me see the hemodynamics. This is Hylar, post Hylar LPA, around 24, 25, I am partially withdrawing it. At this level it is jumping to 35, I am going to make an angio here. Freeze it. Okay, now I let me see whether I have to like have I missed out the LPA origin. So instead of pulling it out, what I'm going to do now is this is about thirty. 35 to 40, I am swapping my catheter to the right now. So come to the right. Come to the right, right view. So this is the, have I come out already on the right? No, okay. So this is the right. 
right is about uh, 40 by 40 yeah around 42 by around 5 so now I am pulling back on the right so here it is about 65 now I am going to make an angio here is this the view for the right we have not encroached on to the right uh, the right hilum we are safe on the hilum okay so so the right uh, uh, the the pressures now are 65 on the proximal main pulmonary artery come to the L, 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 L left view i am going to make an injection from this right sheath to see how is the left so my injection is from the right the question is whether the left uh, ostium we have missed it I didn't want to protrude into the main pulmonary artery I just wanted to be we can post dilate Dr. Arvind says that we can post dilate and try to, yeah, let us try, 14, we need a very high pressure balloon. Bova, what is the burst pressure? Show, take, a, take a bova, 14, 14 into 4 bova. Dr. Dr. Bharat, what shall we do? Like this is the left origin. I don't think that mm -hmm. you have missed the left right origin and I think it is worth uh, post dilating. Uh, post dilating okay. this uh, whatever the residual waste that is left and uh, I don't know okay. what what balloons you have but uh, if you have an atlas gold I think uh, this is a good okay. place to use a small atlas gold maybe two centimeters okay let me do an atlas atlas 14 into 2 can you give me an atlas 14 into 2 uh, because if yeah, you have I also a, like atlas because, because uh, uh, the only issue Shiva is if you have an ordinary atlas it has such a big shoulder yeah that it gets into but if you have a gold yeah. it really works out very well I don't have a gold but I will use an ordinary atlas I'll take a 14 into 2 so so yeah. then on either side there is 14 going to be 4, 4 centimeters be a, yeah, 14 I will two, adjust it yeah 14 into 2 is a good idea but many times 14 into 2 are small length 75 so they may not come out of the sheet confirm that you have adequate length to come yeah. out of the sheet yeah 14, 4, 14, 2. Huh? 14, 2. What is the length? 100 centimeter. So, uh, so for, we are fortunate to have a 14 into 2 atlas, uh, regular atlas. Dr. Bharat uh, uh, pointed out that it will be nice to have an atlas gold which has got an extremely small taper, uh, but it is not freely distributed within India. Uh, now, what we need is uh, the indeflator to be connected. What is the burst pressure here? 18. So, uh, can you can you keep it straight? Just keep it straight. One of the advantage of uh, Atlas is that it is very low in profile, that uh, it will uh, go through many of the sheets quite easily. So now I am trying to gently go. Shiva. There Somebody some said action on the yes. No, you go ahead. I'll 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 comment. Yeah, tell me. Somebody hold said it, the it, burst pressure it. for Atlas is only 80. I thought it is. Uh, yeah, this this 14 this 14 millimeter this 14 millimeter is 18. Okay. So now I'm actually jerking my way in because because sometimes what happens is this Atlas has got an ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, which is uh, like a cloth. So it is very. Uh, uh, sister, go to slowly to 18. Yeah, keep on going. Yeah. Yeah. It 
it'll take a long time to inflate and long time to deflate also i think the proximal is dilated 18 okay deflate fully deflate let us see what is our angio like i'm going to be injecting from the right sheath L little bit more contrast how much of contrast have i injected so far 100 35 kilo 100 okay one of the problems about this bilateral pulmonary artery stenting and more svc and other things is the contrast volume and the radiation dose so looks okay rv pressure is now 60 what i will do is i will take out the balloon and then measure the rv pressure what do you say dr bharat so and shiva i think angiographically it looks really very good maybe uh, i'm not sure why exactly the pressure is uh, 60 uh, a patient is not under anesthesia no or under anesthesia full anesthesia full, full, full anesthesia the reason is so and yeah. what is this general anesthesia what is this systemic cuff pressure above just uh, just above that put the pressure 144 by 103 put the pressure here and next i think uh, i think uh, i think it's a great uh, result i don't think that i would do anything i would wait at this i mean it is a uh, far yeah. less than 50% I, of the systemic pressure why do you want to do anything more i think you have yeah. done a great job i i i totally agree yeah so shiva, so right shiva, now shiva. i am shiva. slowly withdrawing shiva yeah mutu shiva we did the similar case yes like mutu i am listening 3 or 4 days ago we did a similar case like this bilateral branch ps stenting and the pressures then decrease like this after huh. that we did only get about half systemic Huh. Um, and then after post huh. procedure, you know, on uh, first day the TRJ was less le uh, normal actually that RV pressure. I think maybe a element of pulmonary huh. edema uh, will be there, and the RV pressure will be holding up because of that. Uh, but the angiographically look good results. Okay. I think we should hold on. Thanks. Okay, I think I I I'll, I'll take your point. Uh, see wha what was the what was the higher RPA pressures that we had? 45. Yeah, higher RPA was 45. and uh, the rv systolic pressure is now 65 yeah i think uh, any further angiogram needed or i think the last angiogram itself is good enough show the last two angiograms yeah it is a Rani? very good angiogram we should accept this result it is an excellent outcome accept it shiva fine so shiva. so what i will do is uh, yeah, yeah, like there is yes i have some Yeah, Dr. Kavita. Somebody is asking a question. Yeah, Dr. Kavita Shiva, it's a good result. Uh, a lot of the times in tetralogy, it's common to have osteoproximal LPS stenosis. Uh, in such cases, would you uh, let some of the stent protrude with the MPA? Like, what would be the guideline to place your stent with? Yeah, I, I, I actually Very somebody suggested that. No, in one. the morning, uh, like in the uh, yeah. See, the thing was, uh, once you have a protruding stent into the LPA ostium. next time when you try to go in and try to post dilate it it actually creates some difficulty sometimes what will happen is your struts get a, get a rc catheter get an rc catheter uh, the struts will be keeping on going into uh, the uh, the one of the one of the, uh, the the catheter will go through one of the struts and create a lot of uh, difficulty so i wanted to keep uh, a uh, very less amount of metal protruding into the main pulmonary artery but retrospectively maybe another 2 mm i could have come proximal i think somebody suggested in the hall right i think that uh, positioning has to be very optimal if you try to go deep far then you miss the ostium exactly exactly so now uh, yeah shiva one comment i want to show the show the heart show the heart yeah yes doctor the comment i wanted to make when you did the right pulmonary angiogram the right pulmonary artery appeared yes. as if there was some vascular Terrible. disease i am not uh, 100% yeah. sure so that could be one of the reasons for the pressures not to completely normalize RPA. even after Terrible. adequate uh, dilatation uh -huh. of the proximal pas 
and my question or comment uh -huh. in this matter is whether are these the patients who also require pulmonary vasodilators after you have adequately dilated their proximal that was my comment because the angiography if you look of the right pulmonary artery that artery doesn't look very normal even in its distal arborization uh, i agree with dr dalvi i so had a couple of patients i had a couple of patients so who stay standing who persistently still continue to have some straight pulmonary thermo, hypertension we had to give pulmonary vasodilators the last case of pulmonary valve uh, that percutaneous pulmonary valve that we did still continues to have some amount of ph because of what reasons we don't know but requires pulmonary vasodilators all right take this one previation so all these factors are there yeah, so I, I, rather than looking for optimal result i think the what what has been done by dr shiva is an excellent and we should just leave it there yeah see the 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 the, the thing is uh, the the child this patient had a right modified bt shunt in the past which often produces some amount of cicatrix within the uh you know the within the uh, right pulmonary artery in its upper branch and uh, this results in uh, some degree of uh, poor arborization on the right this child if you remember there was a right uh, superior vena cava stenosis so now i am going to record the right superior vena cava pressure now show the superior vena cava pressure zero zero your line is it possible shiva, to get simultaneous shiva, to we shiva we are running yeah. very yeah. late as Please far as ahead. lectures are yeah, concerned go ahead, go ahead. so we'll go with the lectures and why think you, go ahead okay thank you yes thank you, thank you dr shiva it was very nice go case ahead, thank you